Introduction In May 334 BC, the inaugural clash known as the Battle of the Granicus marked the commencement of a series of three significant encounters between Alexander the Great of Macedon and the Persian Achaemenid Empire. This confrontation unfolded along the route stretching from Abydus to Das Cilium, precisely at the crossing point of the Granicus River in the Troad area, presently referred to as the Biga River in Turkey. In this engagement, Alexander emerged triumphant, vanquishing the field army of the Persian satraps stationed in Asia Minor, who were tasked with safeguarding the river crossing. Following this pivotal encounter, the Persians were compelled to assume a defensive stance within the cities that remained under their control in the region. Background After the Battle of Chaeronea in 337 BC, King Philip II of Macedon formed the Hellenic League, a military alliance of Greek states, with the goal of avenging the second Persian invasion of Greece. Philip led the league and prepared for war against the Persian Achaemenid Empire. In 336 BC, Philip sent an expeditionary force to Asia Minor led by Parmenion to establish a foothold and conquer territory. However, Philip was assassinated, and his son Alexander III succeeded him as king. Alexander had to deal with revolts in the Balkans and Greece before turning his attention to Asia Minor. Meanwhile, Darius III became the new great king of the Achaemenid Empire and launched a counter-offensive against the Macedonian force. Most of the Greek cities in Asia Minor were restored to Persian control by the end of 335 BC. In early spring 334 BC, Alexander marched his army to the Hellespont, where he prepared to cross into Asia Minor and face the Persian forces stationed there. Battle There are three accounts of the Battle of the Granicus given by ancient historians, Arian, Plutarch, and Diodorus Siculus. Arian's account is the longest and most detailed, while Plutarch's account corresponds with Arian's narrative with some minor differences. However, Diodorus Siculus's account differs significantly from Arian and Plutarch. According to Arian, Alexander ordered an attack on the Persian left wing led by Amyntas and the companion cavalry. The Persians defended from higher ground and outnumbered the Macedonians, causing them to retreat. Alexander then launched a second attack with his remaining cavalry, eventually gaining the upper hand. The Macedonian cavalry and light infantry pushed back the Persian cavalry, broke their center, and forced both wings to flee. Alexander then focused on the Greek mercenaries, who were defeated. Plutarch's account focuses more on Alexander's personal combat with Persian leaders. He describes a similar sequence of events, with minor differences in Alexander's fights with Rosaces and Spithridates. The Greek mercenaries retreated to a higher position and requested surrender, but Alexander refused and attacked them, resulting in heavy casualties. In Diodorus' account, both armies camped on opposite banks of the Granicus and the battle commenced the next day. The Persian cavalry opposite Alexander was routed, followed by the Persian infantry. Historian Peter Green proposed a reconciliation of the accounts, suggesting that the initial crossing by Alexander was unsuccessful and he later crossed the river at a different location during the night. Green's interpretation aims to explain the discrepancies between the ancient sources. However, it is now widely dismissed by other historians. Overall, there are varying interpretations and discrepancies among the ancient accounts of the Battle of the Granicus, with Arians and Plutarch's narratives generally favored over Diodorus. Aftermath Following the Battle of the Granicus, Alexander punished the captured Greek mercenaries by enslaving them in Macedon for their betrayal. He offered 300 Persian armor suits to Athens as a votive gesture, acknowledging the absence of the Spartans in his Greek army. To commemorate the fallen companions, Alexander commissioned the Granicus Monument, a statue group depicting him and 25 comrades on horseback, crafted by Lysippus. The statues were later taken to Rome in 146 BC. Alexander's forces seized various cities, including Das Cilium, Sardis, Ephesus, Magnesia, Trails, and faced resistance in Miletus, leading to a siege. While the Persian losses were not severe, the strategic implications were significant, with the fall of Sardis Citadel and the unhindered advance toward Halicarnassus marking a turning point.